A converged network is one that is in this perfect Zen ideal state. It's one that all of your links are up and running, all of your routers are communicating properly, and all of the traffic is able to flow normally through the network. But of course, even in the most perfect of situations, you're going to have times when the network is going to change a bit. You might have a router that reboots. Maybe the network actually does have an outage. Perhaps the network from the provider goes down. Maybe you have a scheduled maintenance that you always run. And when you do that, you may have to change a connection, move a cable, reboot a router, or move things. Or perhaps a third party, something external to your organization, is causing certain routes to no longer be available to your network. And in those situations, you need to make sure that the network can recover quickly. You need to be sure that you are able to converge this back so that traffic can continue to flow. And it may converge into a different state. Traffic may lo no longer go down the link that it used to go down. Maybe it's going down a backup link. But it's never something that occurs instantaneously. There's always a process that occurs behind the scenes so that your network can converge and begin sending traffic again. This may also be something that the end user never sees. With certain convergence protocols and certain processes that you may have set up, it may be so fast that the end user doesn't actually recognize that any type of change or outage even occurred. However, there are some routing protocols that take a little bit of time and a process that needs to take place to finally get the network back into a converged state. And unfortunately, people may experience an outage because of that. We generally associate convergence with routing protocols that can think for themselves. These would be our dynamic routing protocols like OSPF and BGP and RIP. Those protocols recognize when a particular link to another router may no longer be available, and then it has to figure out a new way to find its way out. There are different ways of doing this. And because of that, there's different amounts of time that it might take to converge the network. For instance, protocols like OSPF are often considered very fast convergence protocols, whereas other protocols like RIP tend to take a little bit more time to finally converge the network. To do this, the routers are constantly checking on things. Every so often, they will send a packet out to the other router on the other side, and they'll expect a response back from that router. So there's different timers that are set up to do that, and different hello packets that are sent out. And what happens behind the scenes is when a change happens, that routing protocol goes into convergence mode and begins trying to determine what it now knows about where to send traffic. It updates its routing tables and sends that information and updates down to the other devices that are directly connected to it. And once everybody is informed of that change, your traffic now begins to flow again on the newly converged network. If you're looking at changes and how they affect your network, then you'll certainly be concerned about convergence and the way it will occur in your environment.